if you could see what we got going on back here. Hey, a couple of Lambros. That's right. It's been a while since we've done a space race. And we figured, you know what, what better way to kick it off in the new yard here than with not one, but two supercars. crazy is that uh, there's actual drag racing going on at the track right now. There's mm -hmm. eighth mile drags, but we're gonna do a shorter than eighth mile drag because <laughs> that's what we would do. We want to see what they actually run. We just want to see how fast you can go past a container. And or stop before you slam into a wall. That's way more exciting. Yeah, we're gonna keep it super sketchy. This is the first time we've done this in this here burn yard. So we're gonna find out uh, what the right and wrong way are to do this with the most expensive cars first. <laughs> I, don't, I couldn't think of a better way to kick this off. <laughs> Let's hope it goes okay. We have these fine gentlemen here from VF Engineering who are kind enough and or questionable enough to bring these out for this. What's up, gentlemen? Well, introduce yourself to the people. My name is Vinny. I'm Gary, VF Engineering. All right, well, well hold on. We gotta do this the right way. Yeah. There you go. All right. Guys, thank you for entrusting us with your cars. Not a problem. Give me some background, because this isn't something we normally see here. Yeah, we were just chatting it up with Vinny. We saw Sam Hubenet out here ripping it up in his two-wheel drive Huracan. <laughs> and uh, we figured you guys hadn't done a space race yet, so we put two cars together. We got a stock one and a supercharged one, and uh, I think we should see what happens. And the best part is, he's got some technically on them, which I respect. We have the keys. Yeah, exactly. Let's check this out. So the white one, the white one's got all the sauce, yeah. right? And the black one's pretty much stock for now. Yeah. Run me through all of this specialness. All this good stuff. Yeah. So this is a Bolton TVS 2300. We call it for for our purposes a VF 8XX. It makes uh, about 850 horsepower. So is it factory anyway? From the factory, these cars make about 830. 830 at the crank, we give it about an extra 200 to 225 horsepower. Nice. You guys have a dyno, right? Yeah. I mean, like, so what do you normally see these things come out of the factory at the tires? Stock at the wheels on our Mustang, we're getting about 480, 490 on a good day. And okay. the Mustang's the, the heartbreak dyno, so that's kind of a, a, a big difference between what uh, Lamborghini advertises at the crank, but we're seeing about 490. After the supercharger, we're seeing uh, about 670 to, to 700. That's a pretty big bump. So I mean, you're I mean, you're losing losing a lot through powertrain, right? Wakes the car up though. It really yeah. does. What else do we do here? Is it stock exhaust? Yeah, essentially this car I believe is is completely stock. Otherwise, other than our supercharger and our engine uh, Actually, tuning. I I mean, the Performante is the top model of the Huracan. There really wasn't much else that really needed to be done. The uh, the owner just wanted to. A little bit of boost in power, make it a little bit different. So we uh, we color match it. The Performante intake manifold comes in this exact bronze color. So we color match it so that it looks almost factory if you were to look at it quick. It turned out pretty well. This is way cooler in factory. Now you're saying this is similar displacement or like similar design to what's coming OE on some of the Dodge stuff? Yeah, the, the core of the supercharger itself is the Eaton TVS 2300 and that's the same blower that comes on the Demon. Okay, cool. And so 2300, does it mean it's got 2.3 liters of displacement or what's yeah. the actual? Yeah. No. Nice. The beauty of this kit is you just bolt the kit on and go. It's factory clutches, uh, it's tuned on the factory ECU, it's complete system, you just bolt it on and go. And so you guys aren't breaking drivetrains and stuff, I mean it can all handle it, right? Everything is set exactly to make it drivable, usable around town. Well, right on, man. These things are so sick. The attention to detail is pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, I was just looking at it, even all the stitching in the dash and stuff is pretty nice. I love this too. This is something we saw that was on like Cubanet's car. Can you Follow tell us about your granite countertop arrow yeah. you have here? Yeah. <laughs> it's forced carbon. Uh, so sick. What's the difference between the Performante and the everything and like the other? Weight savings and uh, a little bit of bump in horsepower, yeah. a little bit change in the uh, drivetrain ECU to the uh, transmission system. 
when it's just, it's, like, it's, like it's, it's just little small tweaks to make it a little bit faster, a little yeah. lighter. Things like on the regular Huracan, the door handles, when you unlock the door, will pop out. On the Performante, they, they shave the little the little motor that pops the door handles out, they shave that out for weight saving. Yeah. I mean, little things like that throughout the whole car. The gauge cluster is different, so when it goes into Corsa mode, race mode, it's a, it's a much more usable drivetrain as far as the, the, the gauge cluster and whatnot. So. The big difference on the Performante is the active aero. It's got yeah. active front and rear aero. So um, at high speed in a straight line, it'll actually it'll it. actually reduce the drag on the wing. It doesn't actually tilt the wing. Yeah. It actually it opens up um, some flaps inside that allow the wind to pass through it and equalize the downforce. Wow. Then when you get into a corner, it can close one side and open the other, and you get torque vectoring as you're going into the corner. It's science, man. So what's going on with this? I mean, obviously we got some gigantic with a six pot calipers, carbon yeah, ceramic like, uh, discs. Six pot. I don't know if it's six or eight. Oh, well, it's huge. So you guys are going to be plenty able to stop in this space. Hope so. Is this a newer model? Yeah, this is a 2019 model year. Okay. Uh, oh, I see what you mean by the color. All right. Red. So this car will be stock for another 12 hours. Tomorrow morning it goes under the knife, so that's why the timing to bring it out was perfect. That's what we like to hear. You know what? I think it's time to party. You guys want to party? Yeah. All right, so we should line them up back there in OG Corner. Here's the rules. When you cross this container right here, whoever crosses first wins. Extra points if you don't hit that. Extra points if you do. Extra <laughs> points if you do. We need to keep our job. Yeah. Yeah, see, when we drive company cars, it's a little bit different. Um. Well, you know, hey, do what you want. I'm not going to stop you. Yeah, as long as there's no ramp side here, I think we're good. All right, let's do it. I had a question here and I was kind of thinking about this. So the stock one, like let's say if it gets more traction here and can take off faster. It's such a small space, there is a chance of that happening. If I get any kind of wheel spin with the extra 200, 250 horsepower, he's just gonna get out ahead of me. But if I can get that thing to hook up, it's it's night and day. That does zero to 60 and 2.2 on a good hookup. What's your zero to 100 number? Zero to 100, I believe was 4.6. You guys are also running nine second quarter miles. Nine, nine in the quarter mile at 147 miles per hour. I was tested by Motor Trend last year. It was the fastest car they tested all year. Well, you know, this is this is the real proving grounds right here, brother. 287 feet. Yep. What kind of boost do these make? With the supercharger, we're making about seven and a half to eight pounds of boost. It's a relatively low boost, mm -hmm. uh, but it's all it needs. And so that's how you can kind of keep everything all together, keep it mostly stock and... Yeah, for sure. Stock bottom end, stock clutches, uh, tuned on the factory ECU. Just get in and treat it like a stock car. Here's another question. You got a supercar, you buy it new, you got a warranty. If you slap one of... What's a warranty? Do you slap one of these on, you can take it off and put your manifold back on and put your tune back to stock and probably be good. It is 100% reversible. That That is... That's plausible, yeah. Plausible deniability, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we're gonna start them back here in OG Corner just for, you know, that old time flavor. And then we'll see who gets there. We like the price is right. <laughs> the price is right, baby. Who do you think is gonna win? Uh, I mean, by power, you'd go with the supercharged white one, but coming out of the hole, you probably have a little more traction with less power on the surface. So, it's tough. It looks pretty even. Pick one, Hurt. I can't. Pick one. I can't. Black one? Black. Okay. You're buying beers if it's not black. We ready to party? Ready to party. All right. Ready! <laughs> Man, these things rip. 
Who, who got that one? I'm getting so much wheel spin coming out of the hole. Yeah, you didn't want to let that one go. You were like, nah! Let me back up and try it again. Best of three. This is already way more sketchy than I thought it was gonna be. Now, yo, <laughs> I was just praising their brakes. That was insane. Man, he, it stopped real fast. That was insane. Kudos it's to the, him for not fully panicking. It's, it's the traction change right here. Yeah. This is why the space race here is awesome. Yeah, <laughs> awesome or dangerous. <laughs> it's, it's dangerous. That's well, what makes it awesome. They're, they're big kicking each other and not wanting to shut down. Yeah. You know, so they're going extra deep. Boys, ready? It's it's too close. They're both just too fast. Nah, it is. This is perfect. Who's gonna judge this one, right? Whoever wins, wins. This is for all the marbles. It stops so fast. One takes it. Oh man, this is too much car to be drag racing in such a small space. Too much wheel spin. Too much power. Too much power. This thing is rowdy though. This is very rowdy. So as it turns out, more power in a sea space. Isn't always the answer. No. Isn't always the answer. But I mean, you give them another thousand feet, I'm, you know, what would happen? Thousand, maybe another two hundred. Yeah, yeah. I don't even need a thousand. Yeah, yeah. Give them a little more, yeah. a little. Well, I'm just saying to really like, you know, like. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they're both. They maintain that nice launch together. They're pretty even, but he gets traction just a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's well, just like it's literally like. So there is, just that. Yeah. There is in, a, in a small ski lot, yeah. yeah. I mean, there, if you guys are bored, there's a drag strip right, 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 right on the way, you know? We, we got the highway on the way. <laughs> it's funny those things stop in like 10 feet. Yo, they stop instantly. We Except that one time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh! Well, guys, we got one last thing we got to do. Okay. We got to wrap this. Let's a wrap! Pretty bad, Wally! Hey, 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 oh, let me get one of those.